Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly review Overland. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 20 bucks. So this is a turn-based survival game. Essentially, you get one or two survivors in the very beginning of the game, you get a car, and you head out with very limited supplies. Your character can hold two items, and any other character that you have with you that you can control also can carry two items. And the vehicle that you currently have will be able to carry so many items as well, but it depends on the vehicle. If it's just a regular car, it can only hold like one item. If it's a van, it can hold two. If there's a truck, it can hold a lot more, but you can only bring two people in the vehicle at a time. So every vehicle has a different amount of cargo space and people space. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. This is also like an FTL-like, roguelike, in the sense that you start off on one side of the map, and you're traveling to the other side of the map. And along the way, you've got some decisions to make. Do I want to go this way? Do I want to go this way? Now, what sucks is that the way that the map is actually formatted and designed, it's a straight line from right to left. It's not left to right for some reason. It's right to left. It's a straight line. However, there are branching paths. But the way it looks, it looks like you can actually go back to other branches and complete the things that you passed by, but you can't. So if you're ever presented with two or more options, you have to choose one of them. And then once you complete that, you'll have to keep going. It sucks because like you'll have the fuel to get to your next location and you're like, oh, I found all this other fuel. Now I can go back to the other things I passed. No, can't do it. It kind of sucks. But um, if you've ever played any sort of roguelike, then that's par for the course. So what are the locations that you'll be traveling to? Sometimes it'll be a gas station. Sometimes it'll be a rest stop. Sometimes it'll be an unknown location. Or um, maybe there's a survivor that you can find to recruit, uh, that kind of thing. The danger comes with these aliens. Uh, it's basically a post-apocalyptic world. And there are these really strange alien-looking things that will try and eat you and kill you. And the game is turn-based, so... Whenever you enter a new map, like whenever you enter an encounter, it's a very small map. I'm talking small. You're going to be using action points to move around doing things, sort of like an XCOM. There's no cover system or anything like that, but you'll be using movement points to move around this tiny map. You're going to be picking up sticks and bottles in order to defend yourself. You can like throw the bottles at the enemy to stun them, do it again and it might kill them. Um, any noise that you make will spawn more, so killing a monster will spawn more monsters, so it's not like you can clear a map completely of aliens. This is more of a, a management game of how well can you manage your survivors and your turns and get the most out of what's in that encounter and then leave without anyone dying or getting injured. That's what the general gist of that is. Um, it, it's not... A brute force kind of game where I've got this car, I'm going to run into everything and just clear the way. Nope, your car can take damage too. Uh, aliens won't attack it as far as I can tell. They go around it. But if you try to ram through things, which you can do, uh, it'll take damage, it'll catch fire and explode. Um, and I've done that by accident several times, it, which sucks. Um, so, yeah, you're going to be going from encounter to encounter, turn-based. Everyone has action points. You pick up stuff. Uh, you've got limited inventory, though, like I said, two slots per person, typically. And, yeah, it's like, I, I feel like I'm never making any headway in this game. At the end of every encounter, or at the end of every map, there's this blockade that you have to get through. And typically, you have to leave your current vehicle to enter the new one, and leave with your new one. Now, you can uh, siphon gas from your old vehicle, and then bring it over to your new vehicle and fill it up that way, assuming you've got time to do it. But I was trying to figure out ways to, like, move the the car that's blocking the way, but I couldn't do it. So I had to leave the cool van that I found behind in favor of the crappy car that was blocking everything. So maybe there was a way to do it, and I just couldn't figure it out, but it just seems like, I again, I couldn't make any headway in this game. Every time I found a better vehicle... I kind of had to leave it behind in the blockade so I can take the new vehicle out. Um, and plus, these survivors don't have any sort of attributes that you can level up either. There's no improvement system. So their their inventory really defines what they're currently good at. Um, sometimes there'll be a repair kit that you'll be holding or first aid kit, stick for attacking melee. 
uh, throwing a bottle. You can light Molotov, or you can light these bottles on fire with a Molotov and, and throw it. Um, various things like that. But again, I think the main problem with this game is it's quite repetitive. Because there's no level up system, you're going to be just, again, going from small map to small map to small map to small map and just micromanaging the crap out of your people. Now, there is an undo button in case you mess up, which is nice. But you'll be searching bins for things, searching cars, uh, you know, broken down cars for things, getting what you can, going out, picking a new location on the map, going in, utilizing your survivors, finding things, leaving, picking another location on the map. And you just keep rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. It's over and over and over and over again. Now, in the event that your car explodes or you run out of gas and you have to leave on foot... You are thrown into this, oh, there's a gazillion aliens on this map, uh, on this small map, and you've got to find the lone car on that map and fill it with gas and leave. Um, it's sort of like a last-ditch redemption uh, try in that, you know, if you manage to do it, then great, you can keep going, but if you can't, you're dead. Um, so yeah, you the primary resource in this game that you have to worry about really is fuel and a vehicle. Th that's your that's your thing. I mean, like there's no food to worry about. You don't have to eat. Uh, again, there's first aid kits to repair your health. If you take damage, then you lose action points every turn. So you can't you can only take like one action, which sucks. So you need healthy survivors constantly. Um, but yeah, your primary resource is a vehicle and fuel. So that's what you're going to be worried about. Again, there's no character leveling. Um, you know, sometimes you'll come across, uh, good inventory items that you can use to help your survivors out, but for the most part, it's a rinse-repeat kind of game. It gets repetitive, um, over the course of my playthrough. And I'm not to say it's not a bad game. The art style is really good. I'm just saying it could have been better than what it is. Um, but if you like the idea of constantly going from a small ma small encounter to small encounter to small encounter, at the end of it, trying to breach this blockade... Figuring out the best use of your action points and what you can do, um, then great. Um, the interface and the way interacting with survivors works, that takes some getting used to. Like, I was like, okay, so how do I attack this creature? Oh, I have to hover my mouse over it and a little bottle pops up telling me, oh, I can throw something at it. It's not that you click the item in your inventory, then you use it. It's you click on the enemy first and then um, whatever is hovering above their head, that's what you're going to use. Clicking on an item in your inventory just drops it. So for the first 15, 20 minutes of my my experience, I was constantly dropping things, picking it up. And then on, on top of that, um, when you're holding a fuel canister, apparently you can't bring it with you into the car. Like if you try to get into the car to leave the map, you just drop the fuel canister. It would have been nice for a tutorial message to tell me that before it happened. Um, there are NPCs that will pop up from time to time as well. You can sometimes recruit them by talking to them, but if you don't have space in your car, you have to leave them behind, which is sad. I've done that. Um, and sometimes they'll just drop things for you and like, here, hope this helps, or hey, I'm looking for gas, don't mind me. Um, they'll loot the map while you're trying to loot the map, and they'll pick things up. Sometimes you'll be able to attack them and take what they have, um, so that's kind of cool. There are animals in this game, like pets, that you can have. The monsters do get stronger as you continue playing as well. Like, they'll be able to go one one movement point per turn at the end of your turn, but uh, there are monsters that will be able to go two, and then they just... More monster types keep showing up over time. And because your characters don't level, it becomes harder and harder and harder. And I... I again, I'm... I, I want to recommend this game. I do. It's just I wish it had more for its price tag. It's twenty bucks. I wish there was character leveling. I wish there were attributes that I could throw points into. I wish there were like backpacks that I could find that would increase my carry space. Um, but the way the game is designed right now, it, again, it's it's more of a puzzle. You know what I mean? It's more of a you know you've got this much space. Utilize it. Um, I just I felt like I was never making any headway. You know what I mean? I felt like I, I was I was just making it from map to map to maps, barely surviving, and I couldn't I couldn't reach a point where I felt like I was overpowered. It was just a constant struggle for gas, fuel, and vehicles, and you know, fighting for my life in between by managing my action points. That's what this game felt like to me. If that sounds interesting to you, then by all means, pick it up. Twenty bucks. Um, but again, I, I I'm I'm in the middle with this one. 
It it depends on what kind of mood you're in. <laughs> if you're if you're looking for a survival game where you're constantly growing in, in strength and power, this is not it. If you're looking for a uh, barely got by by the skin of my teeth every single time, then you may want to take a look at this one. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to me on Twitch and YouTube. That way you can stay up to date with any new content I happen to publish. This is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.